Okay, since we now can see the detailed page for the properties, I think it's time that we start to make it possible to book a property. To keep track of the reservations or the bookings, we need to create a database model for this. So if you go to Visual Studio Code, open up the sidebar, um, and then we can find the backend project here and the folder property models.py so in the same file as property we can create a new model here class uh, reservation pass in models.model and here i want one field for the id and i want one reference up to the property so this is going to be a foreign key property equals models dot foreign key property uh, we can set the related name to be reservations so it's easy to see all of the reservations belonging to one reser uh, sorry it's easy to see all the reservations belonging to one property which is this object and if we delete a property, we can also just delete all of the reservations. So on delete models.cascade. Um, I want one field to keep track of the start date uh, when you're going in to the house. So start date equals models.date field uh, and the date. So this is when you check out models.date field. Um, how many nights number of nights this could just be calculated between these but it's easier to just have a field for this and just calculate it up front so models dot integer field um, yes like that um, guests so that we know how many guests are coming here models dot integer field as well and we can have a total price total price models dot float field it can be a float field yes um i want one more foreign key to the uh, user who created this so created by equals models dot foreign key user um, this comes from the user account models user just like the one who uh, like the landlord um, related name can be set to related name can also be set to reservations so it's very easy to get all of the reservations for one specific user on delete models dot cascade because if a user deletes himself it's not necessary to keep the reservations in the database anymore last field I want here is a created at and this is a model dot date time field so it's easy to keep track of when this was created and if we then pass in auto now add equals true means that every time a reservation is created in the database Django automatically filled this out for us so we don't have to think more about this save so now that we have the database field for uh, sorry, the database table, we need to update the database. So if I just go to the command line where I have this running, maybe I can make this work without any problems. So if I just search in my history for make migrations, then hopefully Docker Compose exec web python mentioned by make migrations is the command to run. Um, there was no output there. Um, make migration is, th is that not correct? Web one. Let me just check here. It was maybe supposed to be backend web one instead. Okay, so there were no output now either. Let me see if there was any migrations field files created. Migrations. 
only the initial one, yes. So it has not been run yet. Okay, so there is something weird because the changes are not detected. Okay, I can see now that this has been created and maybe it also run the migrate automatically. And let me just try to run this command again. Migrate. Not running. Okay. I seem to have stopped this again. Okay, so execute. Okay, let's just assume that this is running. So let's say Tucker Compose up again. Um, okay, so that means that hopefully now we have this database table in the database. Um, we can try to import it in here and add it to the admin interface and then we can log in there to see if it is there so just go to slash admin so here i can see that there are a new property here or new option called reservations which means that it is created at least so that means that now we can finally continue so I want to keep working in the backend to make sure that everything there is working. So I want to create a new API view or endpoint for book property. So at the bottom of api.py we create a new API view and here I only want to allow post requests. You can call this book property and pass in request and the primary key. Uh, I want to have a try accept here just to make sure that everything is working and if there are any errors we just uh, send an error back to the front end so accept exception as e and we can print the error here if we want to see it in the console e and then we can say return JSON response pass in success and set the value to be false which means that in the front end it's not easy to know if it uh, went through or not. And then here we can get the start date from the front end by saying start date equals request.post.get start date. Set this to be default empty. And we can do the same thing with the end date. Oops, end date and the number of nights number of nights and we can do the same thing with the total price and last but not least we want to do this with the number of guests so guests and when this is done we can get the uh, property from the database the one that we refer to here up in the url and then we can just say property equals property dot objects dot get where primary key is primary key and for example if this fails it will raise a 404 error down here and we know that in front end that there is something wrong and now we can create the reservation object so we can first begin by importing the model reservation scroll down again down here reservation dot objects dot create and we want to set the property whoops property to be property the one that we have here we want to set the start date to start date the end date to be end date the number of nights to be number of nights the total price to be total price the guests should be guests and last but not least who created this so created by equals request dot user so now we have the api endpoint as well so we just need to add this into the urls.py so it's reachable from the front end so we can make a copy of the detail and just keep this as it is and append at the end there book slash and the name for this was book property and we want to set the name to be api underscore book property 
So now the back end part of this should be finished. So we can head to the front end and start doing some changes there. So you want to close everything with the back end. And then we can go to the command line because we need to install at least one thing here. So just stop this running and say npm install react date range because this is a calendar plugin that we need to make it possible to select for example from the first to the fourth and similar so then we can just run dev again so that is running i don't think that i need anything else right now so let's go back here open up app and find components and properties and now we have the reservation sidebar and um, i think we also need one more file and that is properties id page.tsx we need to do some changes here as well um, but if we open up the reservation sidebar we can do some changes here first i want to convert this to a use client type component and when we have this, it makes it much easier to use use state, use as use effect and similar from React. So we're going to import this, use state and use effect from React. Um, and we can import the range that we just um, imported, or sorry, installed. Import range with capital R uh, from React date range and there are probably some more things that we are going to need um range is declare button values never read okay this will go away when you start using it um we can import the api service import api service and the import use login module because we only want to make it possible to uh, do a booking if you are logged in so then we have this um, we can set up one constant at the top here const initial date range so I just want to set up that the start and end date that we open with for the calendar should be today so then we can just say start date colon new date parenthesis and and date should also be new date and key selection because we want to select these dates so we already have this property here uh, with the id and the price per night um, and we have the properties for this, um, I think that we need to get the ID from the parent, so the user ID, so we can say user ID colon string or null. And since this is not uh, required, because maybe um, maybe you are not logged in, then we just get null and we know that you are not logged in as a user. So now you can see how to get the warning here because the user id is missing okay we don't have the user id here so we need to get that and just fix the error right away so here where we already passed in the property we can say user id and then we can say user id there so this does not exist so we need to get that so at the top here I can say import get user ID. We already created this in one of the previous tasks. And then at the top, I can just say const user ID equals await because we want to await to this for this to finish. Get user ID. So then we have this and we can pass it in here. And we receive it in here and then we can also say in here if the user is authenticated or not nice let's also just append it to this list that are passed into the component 
and then in here we can initialize the login module just so that we, this is ready to be popped up if we need it so const login module equals use login module and then we can set up some more um, variables and or states that we are going to need here so const fi set fi equals use state this should be a number sorry lowercase number at the default to zero and this fi is the five percent that we take uh, as Django BNB or Airbnb const nights set nights so this is just a number of how many nights we are going to stay there let's just copy this because the default is uh, I guess the default to one because you don't want to spend less than one night that's just weird and copy this and rename this to total price and set total price default there can be zero because we don't know what this will be in advance and then we can create one for the date range const date range set date range and this is also the use state and it's a little bit different because here we want to use range which is then imported up here from react date range and in here we say initial date range so then we use this date range that we created up there um, and then we can say const min date just so that we can set a min the minimal date or the lowest or earliest date you actually can do a booking min date set min date equals use state and here i want to pass in date like that and set the default to date which will set uh, this default to be today so you can't book yesterday till today and similar then we can have one more for the guests so guests set guests and this should actually be a string and set the default one to one um, we also need something called a guest range because um, this property up here has a maximum number of uh, guests that it's allowing so we can set the maximum that will be in the drop down list um, the one you can see down here so i want to stop this at this number so const guests range equals array dot from length so then we set the length for this to property dot guests uh, comma underscore comma index index plus one okay so you can see here and i get a few errors um let me see if i can fix that first of all you can see here that guest does not exist on this property so we can fix that by saying guests number um so that means that now i get some more warnings up here that might be because no property property blah 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 okay it might just be because the weird thing i have done down here so i just need to look over the code okay this is supposed to be a parenthesis not curly braces now the error is gone and that error is gone and this should now work um the number for the property should come from the back end and should just be passed in like we have done already through this object and then this type here will extract it for us so we can use it down here and the, the reason why we use a guest range is because we need to set up an array that the select field actually can use 
So then we should have most of these ready now. So we can fix the select list since I have that here already. So we can move this to a separate line just to clean up a little bit. And then we can say here value should be guests. And that is the value for this one, which is default one. Uh, when we change this, we want to set guests. So on change equals e for event set guests. Then we can pass in e dot target dot value. So now it's automatically set to the one we click on. The class name can just be like it is, but instead of hard coding it like this, we can go through the guests range. So guests range dot map number. Oops, uh, parentheses, and then in here option key number so this is just from one and up to how many guests the house is allowing value is also number which is just the number we are extracting there then we can also print the number inside there so if i save this now go back there is not working let me refresh maybe yes, this is running running and now I can only select one because this house only allows one guests. Nice. So now that is working at least. Um, so I should find one of the other houses. Three guests. That's a little bit better. So nothing happens when we select this. But we can do some calculations on the prices down here. So um, let's go back to Visual Studio Code and instead of hard coding it like this we can start to print out the correct prices. So instead of saying 200 like that we can say property dot price per night because we already know that. Instead of saying 4 we can say nights and instead of saying 800 here we can say property dot price per night multiply this with nights like that since this is javascript you can just do it like this here we can print the fee and down here we can print a combination no sorry already have the value for total price total price so now nothing here is hard coded. If I save and go back, it should say $100. The fee is zero, which isn't correct, but we are going to calculate that now. So if I go back here now, we can create a use effect, which will be run when this page loads, but also every time the cal calendar or the date range changes. So use effect. And then we pass in the dependencies as it's called date range. So when this page loads, this will run. And when this uh, variable here from up here changes, this will run again. So in here I can say if date range dot start date, you see that this is set and date range dot end date to see that that is also set. Then we can calculate the days between the end date and the start date const day count equals difference in days okay so where do we get this from you can import this and i think it should be built into javascript um why isn't this working doesn't have a okay, it's probably because the React date range is JavaScript and not um, TypeScript. So it suggests that we run this command so we can do that before we continue. Stop, paste and hit enter. Then we can run again and go back to Visual Studio Code. So now the error is gone. And what that did was just to tell the built-in TypeScript here that what the different things things in that file is. 
So it was sort of just a warning and not an error. But now I want to import this difference in days. So at the top here, import difference in days from date-fns. Um, let's just remove that and add, add the curly braces instead because I want to import more things. And this is built into React, I think it is. At least it's already installed. But we can also each day of interval. We want to use that soon. And yes. So then we have these functions. So let's scroll down. And we have this difference in days. Let's continue on that now. Here you say the curly uh, the parentheses and pass in date range dot uh, and date and date range dot start date. So it's important that you begin with the end date and end with the start date. Now we can say if day count just to see that it's more than one day and and property dot price per night just to see that both of these actually exist so there's nothing wrong with this. Now we can calculate the fee const underscore fee so it's just sort of a uh, internal or temporary variable equals day count multiply this with property dot price per night divided by 100 and multiply with 5 to get 5% of the total price. Then we can say set fee to fee. So I guess if I save now, go back, refresh, that did not work. Okay, it's because uh, the date now is the same so there is not one day so it will work soon and we implement the rest of the calendar so we can set total price to day count multiplied with property dot price per night plus fee so remember the underscore fee because this uh, set fee state might not have run before we are down here so you can just use this variable we created there set nights so that we store this in uh, the state day count else so if there isn't a day count and that is as it is then we can just say const fee so we generate it down here as well equals property dot price per night divide by 100 multiplied by 5 then we set the fee again so set fee to fee set total price to property dot price per night multiplied sorry just plus the fee so it just will be hundred dollar plus five dollars and set nights to one save so now this should calculate and the total price is also 105 dollars great okay so now this works this works now we need a calendar here so that we can select which dates that we want to book this before i continue i just want to say thanks to all of my patrons if you too want to support me you will find a link in the description below so the calendar should be a separate component so let's open up components folder and inside the forms folder we can create a new file called calendar.tsx and this is a client component so use client is important here and we can import a few things date range date range range and range key dict uh, from react date range so this is functionality that comes from this that we installed a few minutes ago and we can import the default styles for this so import react date range slash dist slash styles.css and import 
react date range slash dist slash theme slash default CSS. So now we don't need to think about the styling ourselves. We're just going to do some few minor changes. Now we can set up the properties for this because we want to pass in the value uh, an on change function and also the book to dates which we'll come back to. So we can say interface date picker range. So date picker props value colon range. So this is the type of that we get up here, which contains the start date and end date on change so when we do a change here we want to pass in the value to the parent which is a range key dictionary void to just mark this as a function booked dates you can set this question mark so it's optional for now date so this will then be an array of dates const date picker colon React. So it's actually maybe a little bit weird that I call this file the calendar and the component name date range. But for now it can just be like it is. So react.fc for functional or function component. Pass in the date picker props. Equals curly brace. So we can pass in the value, the on change function, and the book dates fat arrow function and then we say return like that and at the end we can say export default date picker so we want to do some changes to this here sorry we want to add some markup here date range this comes again from this package set some class names we want this to fill out the whole screen or the whole box it is in. We want the border, and the border can be border gray 400, rounded XL, so it has rounded corner just like the other elements there, and the margin bottom 4. Um, we can set the range colors property, add the array in here, and just say 26, 26, 26, which is sort of a grayish color. The ranges should be an array with value which is the value that we uh, have for example when we click on the fourth and then the eighth then that is a range date what it is now can just be new date on change then we just call the on change function and the parameters will be automatically passed on Direction is vertical. This is just the layout. Show date display. We don't want this. Just want this as clean as possible. So just set this to false. We can set the min date to new date, which means that what we did in here might not be necessary. This here, the min date. Let's come back and see if we need that later. Add the parentheses and disabled dates should be the booked dates. There are none yet, but they will come soon. So then we can save this. And that is actually the whole component there. So let's import it into the reservation sidebar. The top here. Import date picker from calendar so that's the name of the file this is the name of the component that we created and then if we scroll down we can insert this down du -du -du we can have it above the number of guests so here we can say calendar or date picker pass in value which should be date range which we have already created on change so what happens when we change the date then we can say a value call a function called underscore set date range pass in value dot selection 
So then this value selection will be the dates that we have selected. Get a warning because this isn't created. I will create it soon. And the booked dates isn't available yet, so let's just ignore that for now. But we can create this function. So we can have this above the use effect and below these here. And we can const set date range. And the reason why I don't just call this directly is because I want to do a few things first. So const set date range equals selection colon any. Because I'm not quite sure what sort of data type that can be. And then in here I say const new start date equals new date and then we pass in selection dot start date replace this with and date and and date so then we have created two new variables and then we just want to make sure that new and date is um, yes we want to make sure that if the and date is lower or earlier than the start date and we want to add a date on that so if new and date is lower than or equals to new start date then the new and date can be set to so set date this is working because this is a date field from JavaScript new start date dot get date plus one so then we just add one day automatically then we can set the state by saying set date range here we can say dot 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 date range because we want to keep for example the the key which is the only thing left here but let's do it like this so we just unpack this set it to that automatically and the values for the start date can be set to new start date and end date can be set to new and date. So I get some warnings here now. Cannot find name start date. But that is what this is supposed to be. So there is something weird. Okay, so the problem here is that I just forgot the curly braces like that. So now that should work. So let's go back here. Module not found. Cannot import this. Maybe I wrote this wrong. Let's open up calendar. So this can be theme slash default CSS. Then it's there. <clears throat> so now you can see the calendar. I can click 19th to 28 for example or 27 to 20 and it's automatically fixed now nice so now most of this should be working but i guess there are a few more functions that we need but let's try to start submitting this to the back end and to submit this to the back end we need to create one more function in the reservation sidebar so at the top here we can create one more function const perform booking equals a sync like that and then we want to make sure that the user is logged in so if user id then we go in here else then we can use the login modal open so then this will be presented to the user but right now we are authenticated with const form data equals new form data with capital F form data dot append guests guests so we get this from the state copy this and replace this with for example um, Actually, we can say start date. This is a little bit different. Start date, and here we want to pass in format, which I will need to import soon. Date range dot start date, 
and the way we want to format this is yyy y dash mm with capitals m d d so let me just import this format up here this also comes from this uh, this package here import format like that but since we're going to use this as a function i think we need to pack it in curly braces and import it like this which means that i actually could just pass it in there comma format okay so now that's important then i get a new warning here not assignable number i think i get this warning because this date range might not have this value so maybe if i set and end so not in there but in here if date range then we can continue and i think i still get this warning but if i said dot start date then we can use this so we need to just confirm that this actually exists and that we also have a date range dot end date so we can copy this replace this with end date and the same with end date and this is just something you need to do to make sure that django receives the correct formatted date so we need one more for the number of nights. This is the value of nights. Nights, sorry. And um, string blah blah blah. Why is that not correct? Let me just convert it to a string. Like that. And last but not least total price so total price pass in total price dot to string so when we have now this form data we can use the api service to post this data to the back end so const response just so that we know what happens response equals await api service.post so we use the function we have created there use the back text to create the url slash api slash properties slash and then we pass in the property dot id slash book which is the url that we created previously and at the end here we just say form data because we want to pass in the form data then we can say if response.success that means that the booking was uh, good then we can say console log finished or booking successful so we can see this in the console else console.log something went wrong save and to then just activate this booking button we can scroll down and find the, 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 this book button here or this div and when we click this we want to call that function so here we can say on click then we want to call the perform booking function so let's try this we have this terminal open and we can have the inspector open just that we can follow along on everything let's write the book from the 20th to the 22nd that will be 200 dollars we want two guests book okay i was not logged in yes so now i was logged in let's go into there again 20 to 22nd two guests book Okay, it still says that I'm not logged in, but that is not correct. So there is something wrong with the user ID check. <coughs> so the user ID here, console log. Let's find out why. Refresh. ASDF no user id so i have this user id 
and it is passed into the reservation sidebar user ID there so then I check it there let's see here console.log perform booking and we print out the user ID there as well book so perform booking and then you have the ID so now it was working I don't know why it didn't work previously but yes I still I get a warning or an error from Django expected a response to be returned okay so open up API inside the property forgot to say here return JSON response success true but since it got there it might look like it was working so yes now we have a reservation nice the end date is wrong on the other hand it's not good but let's try to make one more booking 20 to 23 two guests book so now we get the booking successful back there perfect go to reservations and now the date was working the other one was probably not because I had refreshed and hadn't selected the dates so you can see the total price how many guests how many nights etc which means that now the booking is sort of working let me just see the to-do list book property there is nothing more subtasks there but um, I want to show the already booked dates because now I won't be able to book these anymore I need to fix that okay so the first thing I want to do to get these properties is to create a new serializer so let's open up serializers.py in the property app let's say class reservations list serializer pass in serializer.model serializer and then we can specify the class meta the model we want to use is reservation so we need to import that also up here scroll down again and I set which fields we want so fields we want the ID we want the start date we want the end date we want the number of nights we want the total total price and we want the property so these are not really necessary right now because we know which uh, number of nights it is etc but we're going to use this later on we're going to show the reservations in a list so we can just have this as it is and we just need to use this property list serializers for this because we need some more information about the property later so here we can say property equals properties list serializers read only equals true and many equals false so now we get some information about the property here as well so now that we have that serializers we can go to the api.py and set up the endpoint for getting the reservations so here we can say um, reservations list serializer and scroll down and then we can make a copy of this these lines here because we want to get the property and a little bit like that so just rename this to pro property reservations and we get this based on the primary key and that and then we can get all of the reservations for this so reservations equals property dot reservations dot all then we use the related name in the model set up the serializer equals reservation list serializer pass in the reservations set many equals true because now we want a list of all of the reservations and then we can just return these by saying return json response to, and then pass in serializer dot data 
So if you don't open up your s.py and just append it here, oops, then we know have done everything we need to do in the backend. Reservations, uh, property, reservations, API underscore property reservations. So what we need to do then is to load these in the front end. So if we go back to your reservation sidebar, we can create this somewhere here. For example, under the set date range, const get reser oops reservations equals async create a feather function like that, and we can say const reservations equals await api service dot get. Now we use the backticks to create a URL slash API slash properties slash pass in the property ID and append the reservations just like we did in the URLs file. And then I want to create a new array of dates. So let dates colon date. So this is just some TypeScript functions. Like that, so now we have an array of dates. Now we can loop through the reservations. Reservations dot for each reservation colon any because I'm not sure the data type for it is. And then const range equals each day of interval, which was one of the other functions that we created here which just creates a new day for each of the day in this interval here. Parenthesis curly brace. And then um, in here is a start for when we start this new date, pass in reservation dot start date. So here we can see this uses the lower case with the underscore, which is from the database back in Python and new date plus in reservation dot end date then we close the const range and say dates equals then we unpack everything that is in here since this is now a loop we just keep adding to it dates and we want to unpack this range here so dot dot, dot range And when we then have these, we can at the bottom here say set booked booked dates to be dates. Now we can see that a warning, I get a warning here because we haven't defined this booked dates yet. So let's scroll up and set it up here. Const booked dates equals set booked dates equals use state this is a type of date um, a date array sorry and the default here can just be an empty array okay so now we have set the book dates now we just need to use this so we can use it down here in the date picker book dates equals pass in book dates and you can see we get no warnings there now because we are already expecting it here and since um, this was optional we had already set this to be disabled when we get something there so I think it was almost supposed to be working expected expression okay looks like I added a comma that wasn't supposed to be there semicolon Refresh. Okay, it doesn't look like these are disabled. No. Set booked dates. Okay, the reason why is because we haven't called this get reservations yet. So we need to do that. And we can do that every time this here is run. So we can just add it at the top of use effect. So if I refresh now, we can see that I get the new 
error from Django nice not but it's always nice to do some debugging let's see here if you can see what the wrong is in order to allow non dict object to be serialized set the safe parameter to be false okay so here we can just say safe equals false and as you can see now that should be working and the reason was that uh, it's not a dictionary and a non-dictionary can't be serialized, serialized but if you set this to false then it will be serialized anyways so now you can see that these four days are disabled because I have already made a book booking for these dates nice so that means that now I can go to the to-do list and set this task to done so the next step then is to make the landlord page dynamic meaning that when you click this name I want to be sent to uh, landlord page and I want to load information there with all of the uh, properties that this landlord owns so if we first go to Visual Studio Code and just find the page oops the page where we show this or the, the detail page for the property then I want to make this clickable so instead of a div here we can say link close this link move this to a separate line and we can set the href here so href set back text here slash oops slash landlords slash and now we pass in the property dot landlord dot id oops like that you can see a new get a warning here because you can't find this so we can import this import link from next slash link then the warning is gone if i go back here now i can click this and i will be sent to the landlord page everything here is then hard coded so that's what we are supposed to fix now so if we go to the sidebar here just to find the landlord's id page.tsx <coughs> at the top here uh, we can use the api service to get the information from the backend so const landlord equals await okay so now you can see that to get the warning here because we are not in a asynchronous function so we need to convert this to an async function first of all but we also need to allow this to have parameters so in here we add curly braces params colon new curly braces params colon new curly brace id which is a type of string close close and then close the parentheses now I can use the await function in here because now this is an asynchronous function with parameters. So now we say API service, then this was automatically imported. Dot get. Use the back text to slash API slash auth slash, and then we can just pass in params dot id. So this params just refers to this one, and the id is this one of course which is the name of or the id of the landlord and um, we can also get the user id for the user id we are because we're going to need that later user id equals await get user id and then that was also automatically important so if we save now go back see here that we get some errors probably because the auth page didn't exist um where is that du, du, du. yes here you can see i get the 404 error because i haven't created this in the back end yet so maybe we should do that before we finish the front end so inside the back end folder open up django bnb user account and then we can create a new file here so api.py so we already have a serializer for the user so we can import that 
from dot serializers import user detail serializer and um, we can also import the model for the user so from dot models import user and we can import the JSON response from Django from Django dot HTTP HTTP import JSON response let's close this and we need to import a few things from the a few decorators from the rest framework so from rest underscore framework dot decorators import api view authentication underscore classes and last but not least permissions classes so now we are ready to do this to sorry to get the landlords so at api view this should only accept get requests and we can set the authentication clauses to be empty because unauthenticated users should also be able to use this then def landlord detail request and primary key and then we can get the user from the database by saying user or landlord equals user.objects.get where primary key equals primary key and we can use the serializer equals user detail serializer pass in user and set many to be false then we just say return json response serializer.data and save equals false in case it is not a serializable object so now that we have that we can import this view into this file so from dot import api we can just import the whole file and when the path is um, this is already api what and then we just append uuid name primary key and when the url matches that one then we can use api dot landlord detail and say name equals api landlord detail and save so that was hopefully it for the back end so if i refresh now i still get an error did you mean permission classes sorry did a typo there permission classes permission classes okay no there are no errors refresh and then i got the information from the bracket back end perfect so then i can do some changes here instead of showing landlord name we can say landlord.name I think that will be correct yes stein perfect and we can also replace the avatar so instead of hard coding it like this we replace it with curl braces and said landlord dot avatar underscore url so i don't have an image for that one that's okay because it's just that i haven't uploaded it for this user and then we only want to show this contact button if this isn't you so above here we can say user id not equals params dot id if that is correct then sorry if these are not matching then we show this button so then you can see that i still see this because this is not me and then we have the properties list here and here i want to pass in the landlord id so that you can just use this to filter it and then this can be more reused so here you can say landlord underscore id equals params dot id and then i get the warning now because this is not supposed to be passed in to property list so if i then find that file property list then i can set up here that i actually do want it here as a parameter sorry as a property so below here i can say interface we need to set up this property list props curly brace 
landlord ID question mark because this needs to be optional and this can either be a string or the value can be null then we convert this to a react dot functional component and pass in property list props and to make this available in here we say landlord id and then i should actually just be able to pass that in here to the back end so what i want to do then is to say uh, let url so i just define this as a base url and pass it in there and then i can say here if landlord id so we can check if this exists then the url should be changed a little bit so it's going to be url plus equals question mark and then say landlord underscore id equals landlord id so i can use this here without converting these to backticks this and uh, this like that so now if i go back and refresh nothing happens now but if i go to the terminal you can see that i want to get the properties where this is the landlord id so then i just need to receive this in the back end as well so in the api for the property then we have the property list then below here i can say landlord id equals request dot get dot get landlord underscore id and default is to be empty and i can check here if this is set and if it is then i can say properties equals properties dot object sorry properties dot filter where landlord id equals landlord id so then we add some filter here we can add like a little comment there just to separate and clean this a little bit so if i go back now and refresh i only get two properties because these are the only two properties that this landlord is owning nice and if i go into this one which is a different host then you can see here that this only has this property nice okay so that means that now the landlord page is also dynamic you can click on it and you can view the properties in there so you can set this task to done by the way if you want to learn even more django or view from me you should check out my website codewithstein.com the site has many premium courses and a lot of awesome blog posts and for as little as 20 dollars per month you will get access to all of my content and you will be able to track your progress, you can talk to me and similar. So go to codedstein.com after the video and sign up. Okay, so let's do one more quick one, which is the my properties. That should go quick because it's very similar. Let me just close all of these files and find my properties. Then you can see that we used the property list here as well so here i can actually just provide my own user id as the landlord id and i will get my properties so up here i can say import get user id then i get that automatically then i just need to convert this to be an asynchronous function in async like that i think and then i can say const user id equals get user id Got to add the await there first and then down here i can say landlord id equals user id that was actually it there so if i go to the front end here and go to my properties that is empty yes that is correct because i don't have any properties but i can assign one to me Right now, I am the user Stein at Stein. Save. So if I refresh now, I should own this one. Perfect. Um, just one thing that I can fix first to remove this since this is unused. But I want to have a link up here that goes to this page. So we can fix that. 
by finding the component for the nav bar the nav bar there the user nav i think is the correct one yes we have the logout button so if you add some empty fragments to wrap these buttons then up here i can say menu link say label uh, my properties and when we click this we can close this user nav bar set this open and when that is done we can go to du -du -dum. sorry how did we automatically go to page du -du -dum. So it's just this router that push, not the correct URL, but I can copy this, go back here, and we can go to slash my properties, and I just close this on click, and that one, close the menu link and save. Okay, I get a warning because I cannot find router, we need to import this. Import use router from next navigation and then at the top here I can say const router equals use router. So now the error is gone. Let me go to the front page, click here, then we have my properties, which takes us to my properties. Great. So then I can set that task as well to done. Okay, so then we have one more task, my reservations. So let's find that page, my reservations. Since we already have the nav bar open, let's create a link to this. My reservations, my reservations. So we can go to that page, my reservations. So you can see this hard coded here. And I want to load this from the backend, make it possible to go to this property and just see the places you have reserved or booked. So I can just close the user nav. I can close my reservations. No, I want that open, of course. Okay, so we can begin with creating the backend API endpoint for this. So just close to find the user account api.py so i think i need to import the reservation list serializer here from property dot serializers import reservations list serializer then i can create a view for this so i can copy this decorator say def reservations list pass in the request parameter we don't need a primary key or anything because this is only go to use the uh, request user so reservations equals request dot user dot reservations dot all request sorry so now we just use the res uh, related name from the models.py Set up the serializer, serializer, serializer equals reservation list serializer, pass in these reservations and set many to be true. Then we can just do it just like we did up there and that was it. So then we can import this into the URLs here, the above this here, we can say path my reservations slash then we're going to use api slash my or reservation list what i call it reservations list and the name can be api underscore reservations list and that was everything we need to do in the back end so we can close these two and then we can uh, get the d -d 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 API service here. So let's import that. Import API service. Convert this to be an asynchronous function. 
const reservations equals await api service dot get so we just use that function slash api slash auth slash my reservations remember the slash at the end then we have a list of reservations that I can just loop through them down here instead of hard coding them so I can remove one of these hard coded go to the top here below the space y and above this one and I can say reservations dot map pass in reservation here in singular form and that is data type any we could set up a type up here if we wanted to so that we know that we have the start date the title etc but i'm not going to bother with that right now and then we set up the fat arrow function like that if i just take these three i can paste them below this div and fix this indentation so if i save now go back here you can see that this is empty there was supposed to be one i thought um, but why you can see here that it's trying to get my reservations but why is that empty request that user that reservations dot all print user request dot user so know that it is me print reservations just so that I know there isn't any lost here refresh go back here user you can see here that there are two reservations so why do not they come through here um boom, boom. okay it's not a problem there I forgot to add this return here so return parentheses like that because every time you map through something you need to return the data if you want this to show so now you can see here that these are still hard coded the data but it is working so let's replace the name with reservation dot property oops property dot title you can see the name of that one perfect and we see when we are checking in reservation dot start date copy and replace and replace with end date you can see number of nights and we can see the total price so now you can see that the data here is dynamic so we need to fix this image now and this button so the house or the image should just be reservation dot property dot image underscore url so now this is dynamic as well perfect and then it's just to fix this one and let's just move these to separate lines there are two long these attributes and then on click and when we click this we can call a function and say router.push um, and this should go to slash uh, properties slash and then we just pass in the id so reservation dot property dot id like the warning here because we have not imported this so import router from uh, router from next navigation it's supposed to be navigation like that import router from next navigation so it's actually use router so import use router from next navigation and then up here we can say const router equals use router so we initialize it and the warning is gone
So if I go down here, use router only works with client. Okay. Use client. Can I do that? No, I think that I get a new error here now because this router isn't supposed to be used in there. So let's just remove this button right now. Um, we need to create a new function or component just for this button. So let's skip that for now. We now have the list of my reservation and it seems to be working. Maybe I could import the link. So import link from next link and use that instead. Sorry, copy this. Control C just so that I get the button back. And then I can replace this with the link. Link and du -du -dum. HRF goes to. like that. So then I think this should work. So now I have to get property and if I click that I'm sent to this page. Perfect. So now I see that this image is wrong. Why is this wrong? Is this image hard coded from the first one of the previous parts? Yes. Property dot image URL. That is correct. Nice. So now we have the My Reservations page as well. This button works. We can zoom in this image a little bit. We get this information that we need. Perfect. Done. Okay, so now I want to make it possible to set the property as favorite. Okay, so in order to make it possible to set this as favorite, we need to change the database a little bit. So if I open up models.py in the property folder, then in the first one of the first parts we set this favorited just to be empty. So let's change that to be a many to many field. Models.many to many field pass in the user. Then this will just be a list of user users that has liked this uh, property. Related name can be favor favorites, so it's easy to get all of the favorites for one specific user. Set the blank to be true in case there are none who has liked this. And save. So now we need to stop this server here. And when this is stopped, I can't run the make migrations, so let's just start them here. Running, and if I just click up a few times then I can find the make migrations and the migrate and I think if I say docker compose oops up, docker compose up now du -du -dum, then you can see here that this migrations was run I add a new field to the property and everything should be ready there Great. So that was step one for making this work. Next I want to create a new uh, API endpoint for this. So at the bottom here I can make a copy of this one. API view def toggle favorite and I said toggle in case you want to remove it as one of your favorites. Request and primary key. And this primary key is the property and we get it just like we do it here. We can set it like that and then say if request.user in property dot favorited dot all. So then it checks if your user is in this many to many field list. And if it is, then we want to remove ourselves from that one. So property dot favorited dot remove request dot user and then we can say return json response is favorite false because now it's not no longer a favorite but if we are not in that list we can say almost the same but we say property dot favorite dot 
add requested user and its favorite should not be set to true. Great, so that was the end point. Let's define the URL and we can just make a copy of one of these and say toggle underscore favorite api dot toggle favorite and the name can be api underscore toggle favorite okay so that was the back end for this and now i want to have a button for setting the favorite so let's scroll up and then we can close the form can actually just have that in the main folder here in the components so let's create a new file called favorite button.tsx this should be a use client component and then we need to use the api service to talk to the back end you need to set up the interface because i want to have a few properties for the property not necessarily the ones that we've used other places so interface property props and then we say id string and i want is favorite this is boolean and mark favorite colon is favorite boolean so we have a value here uh, which is a boolean field called is favorite and this is a function so we set void and then um, actually it's supposed to be favorite props favorite button props that makes more sense since it's just here we are using this const favorite button equals async colon react.fc for function component pass in the favorite button props then we set up the parentheses and curly braces pass in id is favorite and last but not least mark favorite and i think i just get the warning now because this function isn't complete yet um so that return like that now the warning was removed and then i can say export default default favorite button and in here i want to have a div that can click that can be clicked and call a function so div on click and when we click this i want to call a function called toggle favorite and I want some classes on this as well. So class name. Use the curly brace here because I want to pass in some variables. So use the back text to say absolute top dash two right dash two because I want to put this in the upper right corner of the images. Then I pass in is favorite. And if this is a favorite or if this is true then we pass in text airbnb so it is red and uh, else we pass in text white and i use text here because i'm going to use the svg icon and that will make it red or white based on if it is a favorite or not and when we hover this hover then we can say text airbnb so it's red when we hover this and then we can close the div like that i get a warning here now because i haven't created this i will come back to that so where do i get the svg for this if i go to chrome and open up hero icons i can just search for heart and copy the jsx paste that in here like that so since i copied the sv the jsx and not svg you can see that this already has the capital l and everything should work now out of the box great so now we can create this toggle favorite function so const toggle favorite equals async and here we expect 
the event to come here and this should be a mouse event with the HTML div element so react dot mouse event and what we are expecting to get in here is the HTML div element like that so that is how you define the function for this and I need to do this because I need to be able to say e dot stop propagation because I don't want to make Make it possible to click this multiple times, etc. And then I can say const response equals await API service dot post. And here I can just pass in slash API slash properties slash then the property ID, which is ID which we get from one of the properties. One of the props for this component, sorry. Toggle favorite. And to make this error shut up, we can pass in an empty array. And when this is done, we can say mark favorite response dot is favorite. So what we do now is to call this function with what we get back from the server. And what we get back from the server is either false or true based on if it is now a favorite or not. So then we need to do some changes to where this favorite button should be located. So let's open up property list.tsx and do some changes here. Um, up here where we define this property type, we need to add one more property called is favorite. And this is a boolean value like that and then we can create the mark function uh, sorry the mark favorite function that will be called when we click this here so above get properties we can say const mark favorite equals and then we want to expect and have an id here which is the id of the property comma is favorite which is a boolean value Create a fat arrow function like that, and I'm going to say const tmp properties equals properties dot map. So let me just go through all of these property. Property colon. I set this to be a type of property type, which is one of these. And then we create a fat arrow function out of this, and we can say if property dot id is the one that we pass in here id then we can say property dot is favorite and we can set that based on the value that we have here equal is favorite and below here we can sorry below inside here we can say if is favorite and we can just say console log added to list of uh, favorite properties we should have a toast or something to show this but we can fix that later console.log removed from list and at the end there we can say return property just that this is returned and then at the end there we say below here set properties to tmp properties okay so now we just reset this so that the toggling should be working so if i scroll down now we have this property list item and we can pass this function and similarity into there as well so mark favorite equals curly brace is favorite this that fatter function mark favorite so when this is called from the children we say property dot id is favorite okay so i get the warning here now du -du -du -du. Any. mark favorite not assignable yes because this isn't supposed to be on the property list item yet that is the next step to fix now and one of the last step to fix as well so again now with the property list item we import this 
from here so we have the same property type good and then we should have the property props here uh, here we need to pass in the mark pro, uh, favorite which is uh, not required to have there is favorite colon boolean and this is void so a sort of function then we just pass it in there so it can be used in here and then we can put it down here so we can check that if this is there mark favorite and and then we can show it here so favorite button and it was automatically imported this expects an id which is here property dot id it's expect the is favorite value property dot is favorite and the mark favorite function if this is called so is favorite fetter function and if this is click then we called the one that we get from there from the parent again pass in the is favorite value then we can close that one and save okay so if we then go to the browser you can see that we now have these hearts here and let me try to click one of them then I get the 401 unauthorized given token is not valid okay it's probably because I'm logged out now so I need to log in again so let me just refresh click there and this was now added to my list of properties or my favorite and if I refresh it's not red anymore so there is probably just because that I need to go to the serializer for the property and fix something here so if this is liked then I need to show it here Okay, so later I'm going to use a list of the properties that you have liked so we can fix that at the same time now so if I just find the api.py uh, where we get the list of properties so before we create the serializer favorites now we can here say if user so if we are logged in so if the user is logged in I will add this soon then we say for property in properties and for each of these properties I want to see it if user in property dot favorite dot all and then in here I can say favorites dot append property dot id okay so this favorites should just be a simple array like that and then we just need to make sure how can we get the user because request that user will not work as long as we use this and we want to make it possible to actually have unauthenticated users so we need to do some changes at the top here so we can create an auth comment here like that and just say try token equals request.meta http authorization so we want to get the token from the authorization dot split and then we want to get the bearer token bearer remember this space and we want to get the object number one and token equals access token so this is something we need to import soon you just need to validate this with the rest framework user id equals token dot payload uh, pass in or what we want to get here is user id so now we get the user id from the access token user equals user dot object dot get where the primary key equals user id and if we are not authenticated then we just accept exception as e and then we can say user equals none because i know that we are not authenticated so let's import these two things from user account dot models import user that is gone and then it's just this access token and this is from rest 
framework simple jwt dot tokens import access token so then we can try to say print user uh, user just to see if we are actually authenticated so open up the console it couldn't find this package here okay so it's supposed to be tokens as in plural so no errors let's refresh go there again then we can see user stein at stein.no which means that we actually are getting this correctly just to remove this now now we know that we are getting the user perfect this is still not working but hopefully this is working we can say for example here print favorites favorites just to see what we get there refresh now you can see here that I get one UUID perfect because I have only liked one object so I need to pass this in to the front end favorites favorites as is, this is just a list of IDs we don't need to serialize them or anything like that so if I now go to property list and find where we are assigning the set properties down here in the set properties then we can do a little change here because we are now getting these here then I just want to loop through each of these and set this is liked or not so dot map property property type which is what we have here this has this value or property 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 it's a lot, lot of property now create the fat arrow function if tmp properties dot favorites dot includes so if that list includes this property that we are on now dot id then we can say property dot is favorite equals true remember lowercase t since this is javascript and not python but if it's not in that list then we set this to false and save so if i refresh now it is not working okay because i need to say return property since here we are using this map functionality and now you can see this is red because i have liked it nice so now i can set one more task to done and that was it for this time if you have any questions about today's code feel free to leave a comment below and i'll answer as soon as i can see you in the next video